Greetings students and welcome back to another video on partial differential equations. In this video we're going to finally start the discussion on Green's functions for PDEs. Now, Green's functions are typically used to solve non-homogeneous PDEs. The PDE we're going to focus on primarily is the Poisson equation, which is just a non-homogeneous version of the Laplace equation. It involves the Laplacian of an unknown function u, and by Laplacian I mean the second partial with respect to x plus the second partial with respect to y plus the second partial with respect to z. The Poisson equation says that the Laplacian of u equals some function f of x, y, and z. Note here that I've written this in Cartesian coordinates, but you could also do it in spherical coordinates or cylindrical coordinates, as long as you change your Laplacian accordingly. By the way, I've labeled this equation as 1. The boundary condition on this PDE is a Dirichlet boundary condition, where the function u is specified on the boundary of the domain d and is equal to h on that boundary. This boundary I'm going to call s, and this equation I'm going to label as 2. Now before we actually get to solving this PDE using the Green's functions method, I'd like to take a detour and introduce or motivate the idea of Green's functions by talking about Green's identities. I'm going to first develop Green's identities for three dimensions, but then you could also do the same things for two dimensions as well. It's easier. Now the central theorem from which Green's identities are derived is the divergence theorem, and if you recall the divergence theorem from multivariable calculus, you know that the flux of a vector field capital F through a closed surface or boundary S equals the divergence of capital F integrated over the entire volume D that the boundary S encloses. Suppose now that I let the vector field capital F equal some function V times the gradient of U. The gradient of U is a vector, but V is a scalar, so a scalar times a vector would give you a vector field F. Now, we can plug in V del U into the divergence theorem and here's what we'll end up with. On the left hand side we can take the scalar function V outside the dot product, and we'll just have the dot product of the gradient of U and the unit normal vector N. But if you remember from multivariable calculus, this gradient of u times the unit normal vector n, their dot product is just the directional derivative of u in the normal direction, also known as the normal derivative du dn. On the right hand side we can expand out the divergence of v del u using the product rule of differentiation, since a divergence is kind of like a derivative. Once we do that we'll get del v dot del u plus v times the Laplacian of u. Let's now plug this into the divergence theorem expression on the right. The resulting equation that we get is called Green's first identity, and I'm going to label it as equation G1. This identity is valid for a nice enough space, D, and any pair of functions U and V as long as they're, again, nice and differentiable. Now the functions U and V that I specified in Green's first identity are arbitrary, I never restricted u to be one particular type of function if you ignore the nice and differentiable bit, and I never restricted v either to be another type of function. Because of this I can very easily switch the u and v in Green's first identity, u and v are interchangeable. So instead of making my capital F equal to v del u in the divergence theorem, I could for example make it equal to u del v. And if I do this little switch, the result is a modified version of Green's first identity, which I'll call equation G1 star. Now what I'm going to do is subtract equation G1 and equation G1 star. These first triple integral terms on the right cancel, and we'll end up with the double integral over S of V partial U partial N minus U partial V partial N dS equals the triple integral over D of V Laplacian u minus u Laplacian v dv. This equation is called Green's second identity, and I'm going to label it as g2. Alright, now that we have the two Green's identities, I'm going to copy paste them back underneath our original Poisson equation with one modification. I'll replace the v by capital G. The capital G is going to turn out to be a Green's function, which I'm going to define right here. Now, there are more rigorous definitions for Green's functions, but for now I'm going to say that my Green's function is a function which solves this PDE problem, where the Laplacian of capital G, our Green's function, 
is a delta of p minus x, q minus y, and s minus z. So a delta function centered at x, y, and z. So this is the PDE for the Green's function that applies on the domain D. While the boundary condition on this PDE is that capital G, the Green's function, is zero on the boundary S of domain D. The delta, by the way, is the Dirac delta function. Another thing to note is that P, Q, and S are dummy variables that I've created just for the purpose of integration. When we integrate over P, Q, and S, which is what we're going to be doing soon, our answer will contain terms in x, y, and z, which is what we want. We want the formula for a function u in terms of x, y, and z. We want the formula for that solution to the PDE in terms of x, y, and z. By the way, these equations I've labeled as 5 and 6. Now another question might come up. What is the significance of the Green's function? Why does our capital G, why does our Green's function solve this particular PDE problem where the Laplacian of g equals a delta function? Well, here's the significance. If we go back to the PDE problem that we want to ultimately solve, given in equations 1 and 2, we'll see that it contains an arbitrary function f on the right. So with the Green's function, what we're doing is we're creating a subproblem with the Green's function PDE problem, where we're breaking up this f into a bunch of impulses or a bunch of delta functions, solving for g as a result of each of those impulses and then summing or integrating those capital G's that we get from those individual impulses, summing or integrating those capital G's over the entire domain to give the overall solution U in response to the full function F in our Poisson PDE. So this is the ultimate strategy behind using Green's functions. And if you saw my eigenfunction expansion video then it's pretty similar. And I can also refer you to my Green's function ODE video if you want even more background. Anyway, now that I've set things up, I'm going to find a formula for the solution U to the Poisson PDE given in equations 1 and 2. I'll start by plugging in equations 1 and 5 into Green's second identity in equation 4. The Laplacian of U is F from equation 1, while the Laplacian of capital G is the delta function from equation 5. What we're going to do now is break up the integral on the right hand side just because we can. And note that I've rewritten the last dv as dp dq ds since we're going to be integrating over p, q, and s. Now here's where we'll use a property of delta functions. When we multiply a delta function by some other arbitrary function and integrate that result over an area which includes the point the delta is centered at, the answer will just be the arbitrary function except now it's evaluated at the point where the delta was centered. So if we use this property, we can then simplify the last integral term. But now the result is going to be the function u evaluated at x, y, and z, where the delta was originally centered. Now the surface integral term on the left corresponds to an integration over only the boundary capital S, which means that the u and g we're using in that integral only correspond to the functions u and capital G at the boundary capital S. So for this double integral, we'll apply our boundary conditions. We know that at the boundary capital S, G is zero. So this first term cancels. Also, U equals H at the boundary S from the boundary condition on U. So now if we isolate for U of X, Y, and Z, this is what we'll get. The double integral over S of H times partial capital G partial N DS plus the triple integral over D of capital G times F DV. We know f and h from the original PDE we were trying to solve, and we know capital G because we can easily, or at least somewhat easily, solve the subproblem of the PDE for the delta function input. So if we plug our known f, h, and eventually capital G into this formula, we end up with the solution to the PDE u in terms of these integrals. Just note that these integrations we're performing are over the dummy variables p, q, and s. The functions f and h are now in terms of p, q, and s as well. Up here they were in terms of x, y, and z, so all we have to do is replace the x by the p, the y by the q, and the z by the s when we plug f and h into these integration formulas. Meanwhile, the Green's function capital G is in terms of p, q, s, x, y, and z, because the delta function in the Green's function PDE contains all six of those, so it stands to reason that the Green's function itself would still be dependent on all six of those variables. An important thing to note that I mentioned earlier is that we could very easily extend or 
more accurately reduce this to two dimensions. If we were solving a two-dimensional Poisson equation with a Dirichlet boundary condition but now on a curve, we could use the two-dimensional divergence theorem. And that theorem states that the flux of some vector field capital F through a closed curve C equals the double integral of its divergence over the area A that C encloses. And then we could use this 2D divergence theorem to come up with the greened identities in two dimensions, and then we could apply those identities to say that the solution u of x comma y to this PDE in two dimensions is the integral over C of H times partial capital G partial N DL plus the double integral over A of capital G times F DA. Where capital G is the solution to the following PDE problem but now in two dimensions. You could very easily show this two-dimensional version of Green's function for the Poisson equation since I've already done it for the 3D case. The 2D case is actually simpler since it involves one less variable or one less integral. Anyway, that should do it for the lecture. In the next Green's function video, I'm going to find the formula for the Green's function for a few particular domains and then use that formula to solve some PDEs. I'd just like to finish off by thanking the following patrons for donating at the $5 level or higher to my Patreon. If you would like to become a patron, I put a link to my Patreon account in the description and you can support me there if you wish. So that's it. If you enjoyed the video, feel free to like and subscribe. This is the Faculty of Khan, signing out.